All right. It looks like we're just about ready to get started on this end. I want to make sure that the other uh, video is done before we get started on the live stream. So I'm going to let this go for a little bit. Can you guys hear everything okay? I'm in a different, uh, I'm in a different room than I normally am in the house. Hey, Michael, thank you for joining, uh, joining us on YouTube. That's very kind of you, sir. Um, hey, Paul. Hey, Terry. Hey, Jeffrey. Doug, how you doing? Lefty, Dan. Uh, yeah, all right. There's Driddle is here. Dastardly Dave. Richard, hope get, can you guys hear me okay? I don't, I've, I've got, I don't have my microphone uh, with me, so. Uh, Conan Mills, uh, Mike is here. Two mics are here. Um, so we're just going to give this a little more time to kind of get uh, uh, not enough reverb. <laughs> we're going to give this a little more time to um, uh, to get everyone over before we get started. Looks like Chris has a question. Uh, why yo farts smell so bad? Um, will someone please kick Chris off the uh, the live stream? That would be good. Hey, Jim Jam Jimmy in the house. Fred is here. Thank you, Fred, for joining us on uh, uh, joining the YouTube um, uh, at the Casanova premiere level. Um, so I think everyone is is floating over here. And uh, Chris, we wouldn't dream of getting rid of you, sir. Um, so so yeah. So I'm in my living room, and I think that I'm going to. Uh, have a little taste of um, of some John Daniels with you guys while we uh, talk about neck through guitars and um, yeah. So if you guys have John Daniels at your house, um, you should have you should have a little taste too. I'm just gonna have a little taste because I'm going out and getting in the pool after this, and I don't want to um, you know I don't want to get too annihilated before I before I jump in the water so um, so yeah so thanks thanks you guys for uh, for coming over and hanging out with me here at my house and um, uh, I would like to talk today for the next I don't know we'll just go as long as we need to uh, I want to talk about neck through guitar uh, electric guitar um, probably not a lot of neck through acoustic instruments but I'd like to talk about neck through um, electric guitar history and construction techniques and some of the things that maybe will help guide me uh, for this new video series that we're going to start coming up. Now, remember, this video series is specifically for my Patreon and YouTube members. You're not mine, but how about this? Specifically for the people who have signed up and are patrons of Patreon and patrons of our YouTube channel. Um, uh, even a dollar a month is all it takes to um, uh, to, uh, to have access to these videos. Now, um, the last video, the introduction, as well as this, there's no paywall to, um, to hang out with us and, and, uh, and have John Daniels and uh, do some, uh, have some questions, uh, get, get your questions answered. And hopefully I can do that. So, um, so let's see what we have going on here. Um, uh, let's see, which is better for you, Patreon or YouTube? Doc asks. You know, Doc, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think that they're about the same. What you need to know is I'm not getting rich um, off of, well, anything. Um, I'm not making a lot of money off of YouTube or Patreon or anything like that. Um, but we do make a little bit, and every little bit helps. So my John Daniels was this was actually a gift from someone I can't afford the uh, the good John Daniels, and my pool is a horse trough in the backyard. So <laughs> hmm. refreshing. So uh, so I think either one works great, Doc. Um, uh, how many people still have a glow bar? Well, Sean, I don't know how many people do. I do know one person. Actually, I know two people. That have a, that have a glow bar and um, uh, and it's pretty neat. Um, so yeah, um, uh, yeah. So I'm not at the upright lounge. I'm at uh, I'm just in my living room and I'm hanging out with you guys. 
talking about uh, neck through, and uh, and we're we're gonna get right in. We, so guys, if you have questions, um, hey, please don't give me a bunch of um, uh, super chats because that's not necessary for what we're doing here, guys. I'm just gonna try to answer as many questions as I can for the next like you know half hour or so. So just put a bunch of question marks. Uh, I, don't, I I'm not I'm not required. I don't 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 worry about super chat. That's 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 for another time. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. Um, yes, Jim actually has a real life, a big boy bar, but I like this. This is really neat. Um, can I say a word or two more about moisture content in the raw wood, uh, we buy for building guitars from John wants to know. Um, and, uh, some, someone had some, a question about poplar as well. Um, what's the proper neck angle for neck through Floyd Rose guitar? Um, okay, let's 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 jump in. Moisture content of wood. Um, you don't want to have uh, zero moisture content, but you want to have a very very low moisture content. Um, where you live is going to depend on the exactly right moisture content for the lumber that you're using. Um, what I can tell you is that you want to get um, uh, properly dried material. And if you have the luxury of letting it sit for a while, happy meal for you. If you buy wood from Dan and Calvin at Tomewood Experts, double happy meal for you because you, um, uh, you're, getting, you're getting wood that is, is ideally suited for musical instrument construction. Um, so whether you're building a neck through or a bolt on or a set neck, use uh, use material that is not only dry, but also that has been um, acclimated to your your level of humidity. So, for example, here in Colorado, it's very very dry compared to say Chicago, Illinois, where it's wildly humid. Um, uh, so so yeah, what is okay? in Chicago is going to be very different than what's okay in, uh, in Denver. Okay. So get the good stuff and you won't be disappointed. Uh, neck angle for a Floyd Rose, uh, neck through the, the neck angle for a Floyd is probably going to be very, uh, there's going to be hardly any neck angle. If you imagine, um, uh, like say for example, a Stratocaster is not built with neck through construction, uh, traditionally, but, um, uh, but there's no neck angle. However, the distance from the uh, top of the fretboard to the top of the guitar body is needs to be in that three eighths range, um, and that's achieved not with an angle, though it could be. On a strap, it would be achieved with a step. So one of the things that we're going to do in this video series is we're going to build a guitar with um, a step. Actually, it's going to be a, a, one of our daily driver shapes. And we're going to build a guitar with an angle, and that is going to be a prostitute neck, like I alluded to in the video we just watched. So um, the reason that you, you can get away with a step on, um, on, say, a Strat or Tele or something like that, Floyd equipped, is the bridge isn't particularly tall. In fact, if you sink it in and recess it, it can be even less than that. If you, um, if you tried to do that with, say, a stop tail and tunematic that were traditionally mounted and not recessed into the body, um, you would need to have about 5 eighths of an inch. So you can imagine that 3 eighths of an inch uh, of a step is not a big deal. In fact, it looks right. Whereas 5 eighths, your pickups are going to be so low that you, it, it, it's not going to look right. So an angle is where we want to be. We're going to touch on all of that stuff in the video series. Um, uh, so yeah, so guys, help me out with, uh, by putting question marks. Liam wants to know, is poplar strong enough for a neck through, not the wings? Uh, Liam, you know, um, uh, poplar is absolutely strong enough for a neck. In fact, one of your favorite guitar players had a, a very famous guitar with uh, a poplar neck. And that of course was Randy Rhodes, the polka dot flying B, the original one, uh, had a, uh, a poplar neck. And it was off of a Dan Electro body. It was a, uh, you can look all this stuff up. Don't take my word for it. You can, you can deep dive into that. Um, I don't see why you couldn't use a uh, poplar for a neck through. Um, uh, I would have no issue at all 
making a guitar neck with poplar. Having said that, I probably wouldn't be able to sell it. So, um, you know, there are there are woods that get used in musical instrument construction, and there are woods that don't. Some of the woods that don't are are not used, not because they're not acceptable, but because they're not sellable. Cool. Hmm. A little John Daniels. Okay. Um, is it a good or bad thing to do a scarf joint with the neck through? Asks Sean. Sean, I don't know if uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the. Uh, while there is nothing wrong with it, and while there's no wrong answer for any way that you decide to build your electric guitar, um, one of the advantages of a neck through is that there's not a bunch of glue joints. I realize though that the the, the neck through is traditionally uh, loaded with glue joints. You know, like for example, the the Thunderbird bass had a seven or nine piece through neck construction, and and of course all those BC Rich guitars had lots of maple and walnut and koa and things like that and, and various hippie woods. But to do a um, to do a neck through design with a scarf joint, to me, uh, seems like if would be would be extra cool if multi laminate wood construction for the sake of um, doesn't it look cool would be the, the reason to do that uh, to do it for strength or anything like that eh, I, I I would say I would say there's not a lot of reason to do that so so says me if you want to build uh, a guitar with lots of wood uh, you know laminations because you think it looks rad yeah man absolutely uh, build in a, a, a scarf joint with all kinds of crazy other laminates and you can really get some neat looking stuff um, but I would say that there's no like I said there's no right or wrong answer on that um, um, Doc wants to know would a neck through class it be five days or would it have to be longer you know Doc uh, I don't really know it would depend sir on how much prep work we could get done prior to the Monday morning. So, um, I mean, I don't see why not. Like if, if um, the, the problem is going to be like, like uh, Sean asked, what if I want a bunch of laminates? Because as you all know, every time I offer a workshop or a class, it's not good enough for some people. And what I mean by that is there are people that say i would do it but you're only offering the standard you know one or two piece maple neck through i want a nine piece or or a 12 piece or five piece or whatever laminate and and so what happens is i get people that that kind of poo poo the idea before i even start the the workshop so so i yeah could it be done yeah i don't see why not um am i going to do it if the if the level of interest is high enough and I can uh, get you guys to um, sign off on two piece maple construction or maybe you know two piece with a with a one seam of, of a opposing grain or opposing wood color down the middle something like that maybe but um, yeah getting that stuff ready and going on Monday and everybody being happy you know. Um, there's a lot of people who say, now Doc, this is not you, but there are a lot of people who say that the line is longer for those people to say, uh, I think you ought to, than the line of people that say, shut up and take my money. So if we have people who are really interested and really serious, then maybe we could do a neck through workshop. I think it would be really fun. I'm going to have to get you guys to all agree on what a good neck through uh, start would be. Cool. Okay, uh, I think I'm missing some some questions here. Um, um, yeah, so um, <laughs> here's uh, how do we get the USA Jackson soloist to play so well back in? Uh, I, I don't know, uh, Michael. Um, I I don't I never had a Jackson back in the day, though I really loved them. Uh, Presley, California Customs. Thank you for joining us. Asks, do you feel the neck through guitars are more stable than bolt-ons, less routine adjustments needed? 
Um, no, I don't think I don't think that the neck through offers a whole lot of advantages other than uh, the neck joint can be essentially transitionless to the body. Um, and there are lots of ways that you can achieve that with uh, set neck and bolt on uh, or screw together neck construction as well. Um, I, I know I always talk about Dan Armstrong and the Dan Armstrong is a great example of that. It's a, it's a bolt on neck, but the neck is actually bolted underneath the pick guard and the, the neck pokes way out of the, from the guitar actually joins the body at the 24th fret. And you have, like I said, un, uh, unfettered access to each and every fret. Um, but like on a, a, so, so yeah, but I don't, I don't believe that there's really any, uh, I don't think that one construction method is superior to another uh, universally. Um, j that's just me, though. You know, I mean, if you are a Fender guy, yeah, man, you should go with both on. If you're uh, if you're a Gibson guy, set neck. Um, if you if you're a Paul Reed Smith guy, kind of go either way because they they offer they offer both. And if you're a neck through guy, you know, if you're into Jacksons or BC Rich or Rickenbacker or stuff like that. The neck through is the only way to go. Um, but you will need to choose your materials wisely and you will need to um, do your build as effectively as you possibly can. You know, so this is and this is kind of where I want to go with this, because I was talking to a fellow yesterday who called me and he was asking me about truss rod installation and um, he caught me uh, at home and um, and and I'm like, well, you know, uh, just because I don't do it the way that you want to doesn't mean that it's not a good way to that your way that you want to do it isn't a good way to do it. In fact, some of the neatest parts about building your own musical instruments is coming up with these uh, techniques and sleds and, and jigs and things like that. That will um, that will make building multiples easier, um, and sometimes trying new stuff is uh, is a really cool, fun experiment. And see what you like. You know, Chris and I built all sorts of guitars and used all kinds of truss rods and all sorts of neck angles and headstock angles and this, that, and the others. And we finally landed on something that worked really well for us. Um, and that has that has been um, a gigantic time saver. Having said that, it's still like, so the, the guitar that I'm building this week in our build a classic uh, set neck workshop is um, uh, it's, it, it's for, it's for a, a customer. He wants that Gibson traditional truss rod. He wants that Gibson traditional headstock angle and things like that. And I don't do that stuff. So I had to kind of go back in time and, and remember how to, how to, how to work that stuff out. So, hmm. All right, let's see what else we have here. Um, what are the difficulties in making wizard type super thin necks? Well, sir, you're, the biggest problem uh, that you will encounter is uh, having a thin enough truss rod. So um, now this would be, uh, of course, you could you could make a very thin neck on a neck through guitar. Or you can make a very thick neck. Remember, we're trying to talk specifically about neck throughs, but since I read the question. Um, the, the real problem is you, you have a truss rod that is a specific size and you need to have enough neck meat to allow the truss rod to work properly. And some truss rods press on the top of the fretboard and the sides, the opposite ends of the, and the, the, the two opposing ends of the, so of the truss rod. So if you start to adjust it, you're going to, um, uh, if you have very, very thin amount of wood in between the back of the, where the neck ends and the truss rod starts, um, you could have, you could have some problems. Now a thin neck will adjust easier than a thick neck. Um, there are ways to mitigate this. You could put a slot in the fretboard and uh, kind of have your truss rod slot be half in the neck and or three quarters of the way in the neck and a quarter of the way in the fretboard and things like that. But uh, again, some of the fun is figuring this stuff out. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, I might be missing your question, and so I, I, if I if I do, I apologize. Um, 
Doc says he wants to learn as much as he can, and Doc is super cool, and thank you for, for I think I'm getting sun glare from the window here. Um, Sean asks, how much prep work would you do before you glue on the wings? Sean, that is a terrific question. I would say do as much prep work as you possibly can and glue the wings on at the very, very last. Have your neck shaped, have your headstock shaped, have everything done so that the very last thing you do, I would even have the wings round up, the round over done on the wings and sanded and, and any of that stuff that you're going to do. Uh, like when, uh, when, if you look at a Rickenbacker um, 4001, especially a bound one, you will see that the binding actually ends at the neck joint, meaning that they bind the wings prior to gluing them on. So yeah, so do as much stuff as you possibly can, glue the wings on, and then go immediately to final sanding. Great question, by the way. Um, uh, Cassius wants to know, Matt, what is the sound difference between set neck, neck through? I was told set neck sound better um, without the twang sound. You know, sir, that's gonna be something that you will have to, uh, you will have to decide. I don't think my hearing is good enough to say one particular construction technique sounds noticeably better to me. Um, I think that things like, obviously, pickups, bridge, scale length, things like that have more to do with, um, with any sort of uh, sonic differences than, say, uh, a 25 and a half inch scale guitar built using Bender style construction, Gibson style construction, Paul Reed Smith style construction, neck through construction, etc. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that um, you could certainly make the case, but I have never heard that. Um, uh, you know, some of the greatest guitar players in the world made so many awesome recordings with fairly ho-hum equipment. Um by 2022 standards. And um, so that gives a little credence to the notion that the player sounds like the player and the guitar is a, is a very secondary thing. So um, I would say uh, the reason to build neck throughs, again, is because you like the, uh, the look or you like the access to the higher register, or that's kind of your thing. And you want to say, you know what, I want to be a neck through uh, guitar building guy. I don't want to do Fender style stuff. I don't want to do Gibson style stuff. I want to do neck through stuff because that's where I live. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that's the that's the a reason to do neck through. Now, having said that, if you want to use the uh, alleged sonic properties of a neck through construction guitar in your marketing, then you absolutely should do that. Um, speaking of wings, I think we should make some this week. Uh, oh, Jim, Jim, Jimmy. Yeah, I think we should too, sir. There was talk about Wednesday having some wings and getting in the horse trough. I think that would be fun. Um, Presley, California Customs again. I really appreciate what you are doing. The community you've helped to foster is awesome. Well, thank you. What a lovely thing to say. Um, I like checking out your techniques and love your finished guitar. Well, again, thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I've been doing a lot of stuff with, I hate to say clickbaity titles, but that's what they are. And I've been catching some grief from people about the clickbait titles and, you know, how I'm going to unsubscribe because you're fine. But I look at the, the number of views on the videos and it's like I, I did a video couple of weeks ago that was why Gibson necks are the best in the world. I think it topped out at about 5,000 views. The video that I did that why Gibson makes the worst necks in the world is still climbing. It's close to 20,000 views now. Maybe it's even there. So, um, so it makes me feel very good to know that there are people out there, all of you guys, who get what I'm about and you get what I'm doing and you know that my on-camera persona is not exactly like what I'm like in real life. <laughs> So thank you very much. Um, I wish YouTube existed in 1982. Well, I wish so too, my friend. 
when I built my first base in high school. People nowadays really should love these videos. Thank you so much, Sun Bass. You know, I was uh, I, I attempted to build a, my first guitar in high school woodshop too, um, and it did not meet with success. Um, so let's see. Uh, uh, okay, so ah, here we go. Uh, Dominique Brooks asks, speaking of wings, how do you attach them? Dowels, biscuit joint, dovetail, just glue. Well, that's another great question. Um, in the past, I have used both dowels and nothing. I think nothing works the best because uh, you can, um, I, you know, I don't know why I think this, but I, what I do is I use nothing and I put clamps on the, um, the sides of the pieces so that they can't move around. And some people will say, put salt in the glue. That's, don't do that. Um, and you know, if you put salt in the glue, fine, but it, it's not gonna keep it from slipping and sliding. Um, you can use uh, dowels to uh, make sure that things go together properly. Um, if you do that, use caution to make sure you don't, you know, go through or that your dowel goes through a wiring channel or something like that. I, that should go without saying. But I have I have made just about every mistake there is to make when building guitars. And when I make them, sometimes I'm like, ah, so dumb. So um, so yeah, I would say use nothing is and figure out a way to glue it up uh, so that it's it's uh, what you want. It's more than strong enough. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, biscuit joint. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Richard. Uh, do you want to know what a biscuit joint is, or are you asking if we should use biscuit joint? Look, you know what? Let's let's deep dive into that a little bit. So I'm sure that you know what a biscuit joint is, but for those of you who may not. A, Biscuit joinery is uh, something that I remember seeing probably in the mid to late 80s. Uh, probably Norm Abram had it uh, on TV before anybody else. And it's a way to um, index pieces for glue up. And it's like a little, um, like a football shape, but it's two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional, but it does, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not shaped exactly. It's like a football that you only can see two dimensions. Okay. And it's probably, a, I don't know, three sixteenths. And the idea is that you have a special tool that um, allows you to use these specific biscuit joints. It's kind of like a cutter that goes in and puts a half a football in one piece and half a football in the other piece. And um, then you put some glue on there and you put these biscuits in. The cool thing about them is unlike dowels, the biscuits are a soft wood and they swell. So especially when you use, um, you know, any sort of water basically. So that's a pretty neat thing. And it, it's a very strong joint. Uh, it's not necessary, but yeah, I would say if you have a biscuit joiner, yeah, go for it and, uh, and, and use that. Um, you got to make sure that, um, you know, and, and I would say, I would say a biscuit would be way easier to use than a dowel uh, because there's a little index thing. And, and yeah, you know what? Maybe I should go buy one. I don't have one. Maybe I should buy one specifically for this video series. I love buying tools. Um, Lefty says, yeah, this old house, you can learn a lot. Um, uh, could one build, uh, Frank Hernandez asks, could one build brake angle into the fretboard instead of the neck? Um, you know, I don't, I don't guess I know what you mean, Frank. You, you mean, could you have a fretboard that was, say, an eighth of an inch at the nut and let's just say three eighths of an inch or three sixteenths at the, at the end of the, um, at the end of the neck. I don't see why not. Um, I'm not sure what the payback for that would be. Uh, I think that using a step or using an angle built into the, um, um, built into the guitar's uh, neck would be, would be just as, as easy, maybe even easier. Um, so, my friend Richard Ryan sent me a super chat. Thank you so much, Richard. He says, I miss seeing you and Chris at the shop, but y'all always seem to be busy. Hope you're doing really well. You know, Richard, we are actually doing very well, sir. And, um, and I miss you too. And I hope to see you soon. I've got much to tell you about. Lots of things that have happened uh, that are great things that have happened uh, in my life in the last, in the last year. And I uh, can't wait to bring you up to speed next time we see you. Uh, we have a workshop this week that that so if anyone's planning on coming by this week 
this week is not good unless you're in uh, in the workshop. Um, THC Guitars Repairs and Restoration asks, uh, I have a pore fill question on mahogany. Can you compare a three and one paste type water that the, you know, um, sir, I, I don't use, we don't use any grain fill or pore fill any longer. Um, so no, I can't really speak to that. Whether you're using that on a set neck or neck through or, or bolt in neck construction, um, I, I, I jump right to Simtech easy sanding sealer. And that's what I recommend you do too. Um, Michael Minx asks, I'm, Michael, I, I butchered your last name. I apologize. I'm building a neck through bass and guitar for the great guitar build off and basically flying by the seat of my pants. So far, I have a three degree neck on the body thanks to some clever abuse of the miter saw. That would be cool. Um, before I I want to go back to that before I, I lose this though. Uh, Cassius says, Matt, you should do a challenger neck through a uh, solid body. I would love to do that one day soon. Um, uh, so, Michael, uh, three degrees seems a little bit excessive, though I don't know what bridge you're using. Um, I'm sure you've got it all figured out. Uh, it just sound, it sounds like a lot to me. Um, I, I'm not saying that it won't work, but it sounds like a lot. I think two degrees. I, you know what, though? Let me take this back because I don't know where your fretboard ends and where your scale is because what you really want to do, as you know, is less about the angle and more about fitting the bridge that you have to use. So um, I should not, I, let me, I, so I retract that. Belay what I just said. Um, use whatever angle you need for whatever bridge you have. And we're gonna talk a lot about bridge angle or neck angle, using which bridge, et cetera, when we do, uh, when we do this neck through, neck through uh, video series. Um, Michael Frizzell asks, what do you think about the PRS out trust run? I love it, I think it's cool. And I think that Steve at Maximum Guitar Works is even working on a version of that. And uh, I look forward to seeing what, um, what he comes up with. Having said that, I don't think that, um, I think that there are, I have put way too much emphasis on which truss rod I'm using. And um, here, here's what here's what I know after, I've used every kind of truss rod I, I could find. I've made my own, I've made some of the Paul Reed Smith style, I've used the Gibson style, I've used lots and lots and lots of different styles. Martin, Stumac, hot rod truss rod, this, this, that, and the other. LMI truss rods. Uh, I've used a bunch of them. Mose rod. Um, the thing that you should do with your truss rod is not overthink it. Get the truss rod that does what you need it to do. Um, that's easy to install. That you can get for an affordable price and uh, and go from there. I had a fellow sent me an email. He was asking about using the LMI truss rod and why don't people do that more often? Because it's stainless steel. It's I think he alleged that it's made in America. I don't know. Um, well, here's the reason that a lot of people don't do that is because it's $40. Um, and I would imagine you could get a price break if you, if, if you bought many of them. But the fact of the matter is that a $40 truss rod is an expensive proposition uh, when you are building lots and lots of guitars. When you're building one, sure, why not? When you're building one, use the most Gucci stuff you can get. Um, when you're building 17, when you're building 117, when you're building 1,017, um, that's a whole nother kettle of fish. And saving money where you can, especially on something that doesn't matter, uh, and I say that doesn't matter, um, it seems sort of like a, a, a way to incur a lot more cost for no real benefit. So if if the LMI truss rod offers something that no other truss rod offers, you should use that. Um, if you can find a truss rod that costs six dollars uh, and save thirty-four dollars on every truss rod purchase, might not be a bad idea. Um, uh, Sean asks, uh, "Would you route a wiring channel before gluing the wings, or wait to route?" 
Sean, yes, especially if you have if you have access to, in fact, the, the, there's a couple of nectars I'm working on right now, and they do have wiring races in both the wings and the neck, uh, the neck through body portion, because it's easy to do while they're apart. You can just run it over your table router or whatever and route a channel in there. And then once you glue it up, you, you have this great big uh, wiring race that's already built in. So yeah, do all of that stuff. The more stuff you can do um, before you glue things together, the better. And um, glue all that stuff up. So, so that you're, you're gluing your wings on should be the thing you do right before you start to go into final sanding. Get all your shaping done, all your everything else done, um, and then go into final sanding. Your life will be a lot easier. Um, my new girlfriend wants me to cut my toenails. Am I going to wear blah, 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 SS? No, you should keep her because um, you're, you're, you're not going to find anyone better than that. <laughs> oh, we love SS. He's a cool dude. Um, uh, let's see, E.R. Webster, how would you defend? Okay, our, we're getting off topic here. Um, Loring asks, hi, Matt, uh, what are you going to build during this week's class? Loring, that's a great question, sir. I am actually building a, um, a Les Paul Jr. double cutaway left hand for Cesar Rosas from the band Los Lobos. And he's the guy, by the way, that I talked to yesterday on the phone. Jim, if you're watching, I asked him about signing your L.A. Rockabilly record, and he would love to do that. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm building. And um, there'll be a lots, of, uh, lots of stuff about that as we go. I'm having to relearn how to do that because it's so different from what we normally do, the, our normal neck construction. Now, all of the guys who are in the uh, the workshop will be using the one true and holy seven degree headstock angle and eight quarter lumber. Um, it's not the one true and holy, but gosh, it's so much, it's so easy to do. We are all jigged up to do it. I do have, there's another fellow who, uh, one of the guys, Andrew, who's coming in this weekend, I talked with him. He's building a Les Paul Jr. single kind of and uh, I said, do you want to do, you know, this, uh, this is a very small class this time. There's only four guys. So I'm like, do you want to do this other neck construction? Because I'm doing that with, um, uh, with, and he said, no, I want to go with the seven degree because it just seems like the, the better, faster, easier way to go. And guys, let me, let me remind you that whether you're building a neck through or a set neck or a bolt on neck guitar, if you choose a sane construction method, uh, and you choose the, the, the construction method that if you come to one of my workshops and you choose something that I can guarantee is going to work perfectly, uh, you will be happier. And, um, yeah, I think that, uh, I think that that is a lot of people do that. A lot of people take, take me up on that and they make something that is, uh, um, they, rather than try to make the ultimate guitar, the best guitar in the world, they make a good guitar. Now, there are some people that still insist on making the world's best guitar, first shot out of the gate. Um, sometimes they, they, they win, sometimes they don't win. Um, make the best guitar that you possibly can. And uh, if you use the tools and techniques and, and uh, jigs and sleds and things that Chris and I have available, I guarantee you, you will make something really nice. All right, I think we're kind of winding down here. Um, um, I, yeah, SS, uh, Dan says he think you'd, you'd be happy if maybe if you just painted them instead of cutting them, you know, uh, Jim and I might be able to tell you that that's not necessarily the case, sir. Um, uh, having night, whoa, focus, having nice toenails is, um, uh, is, is a cool thing to have. And your lady will, uh, will like that, uh, painted toenails, maybe not so much. Hmm. All right, well, guys, it is 97 degrees here at uh, at uh, the Flaherty RV Park, just my house. When Dylan comes here, it's the Flaherty RV Park. And um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go jump in the stock tank pool unless there are any other questions. Um, uh, Sean says that he agrees with the person earlier who thinks, Sean, that's a, that's a very nice thing to say. And you know what? All of you guys who 
kind of get where I'm coming from and, and know uh, what I'm doing and what I'm up to. Thank you for your continued support. And, um, and I look forward to doing more of these uh, like video workshops. Um, Joy and I have some, some big ideas that I think we're going to, to get started on. Uh, well, I know we're going to get started on immediately because the, uh, the neck through thing is uh, it's going to be something that absolutely is uh, is a video series that you'll be able to buy in a edited form, maybe like on a DVD or I don't know what I've downloaded. I'm not sure how that works. But um, so don't be surprised if you don't if you see um, some other ones coming uh, coming up very soon that are uh, not just um, not just neck through, but all the other construction techniques too for those people who maybe can't make it out to a um, a workshop. All right, let's see. I think there was some other, one other question. Um, uh, thanks, thank you, Dan, who uh, says thanks again for your time. That's very, like I said, very nice of you to, to, to say that too. Um, E.R. Webster says, no questions from me today. I'm enjoying a very lazy Sunday. You and me both, my friend. Um, Tom says, sorry if I missed it, but what's the easiest way to cut the neck angle on a neck through, please? Um, Tom, we haven't gotten to that. Uh, no one has asked that yet. The easiest way to do it, if you have the tools, is to draw your neck angle out where your fretboard stops and where your bridge is and measure so that your distance from the top of the body, in this case the top of the neck length, to the top of the fretboard, if you draw a line at the scale location, is whatever your bridge needs. Say you're using a two pneumatic, you need it to be about five eighths. Uh, draw that line, rough cut it on the bandsaw, and clean it up on either the jointer, that's the hot setup, or uh, edge sander, that is the, uh, sometimes an even hotter setup if, you, if your edge sander is um, perpendicular to your table. Uh, aside from that, you could probably use some sort of router sled or something, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it with the jointer, because a lot of guys have jointers or at least access to a jointer. Uh, it's a very basic woodworking tool and if you have taken my advice and uh, befriended a cabinet maker I know for a fact they'll have a bandsaw and a, uh, and a jointer uh, but we're gonna of course I'm gonna show all that stuff in the um, in the video series that we're uh, that we're starting very very soon um, uh, Mark says Matt looking forward to the videos thanks for doing this you're absolutely welcome Mark and I I, I think you were one of the guys who sent me the uh, the the uh, the idea to do to do this exact video series so so good on all of us. Um, hey Matt, does anyone else still use those aluminum channel truss rods? Uh, a lot of '80s imports. You know, I think that some Martins still do. Um, um, up, 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 up sun base. Um, I have used those and they're not bad. Uh, they're they're kind of a combination. I don't know what they uh, what they offer that's say the standard um, two-way truss rod that uh, you can get very easily from Bitterroot uh, does, uh, it, I don't think it does anything better than the one from Bitterroot uh, does. In fact, I think it might not even do things as well as the stuff from Bitterroot. So, okay. All right, gang. Well, I'm going to go jump in the pool and I will see you later this week. Um, if you're one of the uh, lucky people signed up for the workshop or you're Chris or you're Jim Jam Jimmy or you're any one of my other people, Come over to hang out with us. I'll see you this week. If not, I will see you on Thursday for our regularly scheduled live stream and Friday for our workshop reveal. And um, I'm not sure what this Sunday's video is going to be because I might have to miss it. I think I want to have a video, but I might not be able to tune in. Um, I've got some family obligations that uh, that might come up. Um they're not might coming up that that are coming up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, to be here on Sunday or not, but there will be a video. Rest assured. Um, okay, so uh, guys, have a great rest of your weekend. I hope you have a stock tank pool. Driddle, you need to get one. If you have a stock tank pool, uh, please go jump in there and get nice and cool and uh, sleep well. We got a busy, busy Monday and a busy, busy week and a busy, busy weekend. So um, enjoy some John Daniels on me and uh, on me. I'm not paying for your John Daniels. Enjoy some John Daniels and, uh, and enjoy the pool. We'll see you guys later this week. Have a good one, everybody.